Hey, hello and welcome to this new After Effects tutorial by Flowmotion. And today we are going to take a look on how we can create a halftone pattern and even a colored one inside After Effects with a few tricks and effects. So let's directly get started by creating a new composition. Make this 19... 20 by 1080. Of course you can choose whatever size you want, but I'm just going with TV standard HD TV and hit OK. Let's at first create the source for our halftone effect. So I create a new composition and call this source. And for that effect, it is important to have an image with nice black, gray and white values because we are going to drive our effect once again with the Luma values of an image. So I already have imported an image that I took a while ago of a skull. And let's just tweak with the contrast and levels a little bit to just give it some more contrast basically. So we just type in contrast and take the contrast effect and just give it more contrast. We could also increase the blacks with the levels effect. Maybe just crunch together and play with the game a little bit but that looks about fine really really dark eyes then it's bright again and we have some nice fall off going on all around the skull so that's fine for me so let's go back into our comp one which we maybe can rename to our main comp here and hit ok now let's just bring in our source and of course we want to have a black and white image so we can also tint our source and we can play with all the settings and the curves and the levels and contrast and whatnot later on as we have pre-composed this. So but we have to keep in mind that we are not playing with that image we just apply or use the black and white so to say the luma values of the image to drive another effect because we want to go for this halftone effect which basically means we have big black dots where it's black and smaller dots wherever it is brighter or white. So let's at first create our base layer for that with just a pattern of black dots and there are many many ways to do that. You could mask out dots, you could use a shape layer and just create one circle and use different variations of the repeater to spread them out. But when I was looking for an easy way to do that, I found a really easy way to just create a black solid. And for now let's just hide our source or disable it. And we just want to go to the effects in presets type in ball because we want to use the CC ball action and bring it out. At the moment we can't see that there are big black balls because they are too big and too many. Or in other ways they are in a raster but they fill out each square of the raster. So we want to bring the ball size down to only 50%. And let me just zoom in here. So when I'm going down to 50%, they really fit into the raster. And if we play with the grid spacing, you can see what this is doing. So we can really play with that. And for now, just choose a setting that we are happy with. So something like this should be fine. Now, what is the effect that creates smaller circles for brighter areas and bigger circles for darker areas. And I found that a lens blur is exactly what we are looking for because when we are, have stuff that is further away 
it gets more blurred and the closer stuff is sharper. So we can drive the amount of a blur with a distance map or technically speaking, it's a depth map. So whatever is black stays sharp and whatever is brighter gets blurred more. And in this case, we are just going to blur our dots less or more based on Luma values. So let's just do that by bring out a camera lens blur and apply it to our black solid. So by default, this is already set to five, but we don't worry about that now. Let's just go to the blur map and choose our source now. And for the channel, we want to go with the luminance, which is exactly our default. And you can hardly see it, but when you look closely, you can see that there's something going on already. Maybe we can see it better when I'm increasing the grid spacing. And maybe I'm also increasing the blur. So now you can see that everything that is brighter is blurred more and therefore the core of our black circle is smaller. And we want to get rid of that fall off now. And we can do that with a choker, which just erodes our alpha. So when we bring that up, you can see this is what's happening. And we're already starting to see something. But let's just hide that for now and bring our ball size back down again to a grid spacing of about 10. And our blur is too much. So let's bring it back to something that we had before, like four or five. And now reset the simple choker and just slightly bring it up. Okay, now we hardly can see it because the difference is so small, but at least we don't have a fall off anymore, but just dots. Now we bring the dots back out again instead of eroding them. And we can just duplicate our simple choker and now go into negative values and look what's happening now. I start to see a skull again here. Just have to play with those settings. And maybe we make the grid spacing even smaller to something like five. Now we just have to fine tweak our settings again. And I'm just bringing it down until the feathering is gone, but I still see something of the dots. And then I'm just going into negative values. Perfect. And for the sake of it, let's just create a white solid and bring it in as a background layer. Go to full resolution. This is really starting to look nice. And you can also play with the ball size now. Because if you make it a bit bigger, you can only see white parts because now the balls are so big that they are overlapping each other at the dark parts. So just go slightly over 50% here and the black parts are almost gone. Maybe 53. This really, really looks nice now. But to make this look even more awesome, I just quickly prepared something because I want to show you a quick method on how to get a colored half tone look. So for that, I just pre-composed our black dots here. See, it's just the black dots that we have created. I still have my source and I have an invert layer, which I can enable and disable just to invert the colors. Just like so. But for now, let's just take those two. And now we want to create something like a print image where we have our three colors, red, green and blue, and just mix our image out of those three colors. Or if you have it on a screen, it would be like yellow, magenta and cyan. So for now, I'm just tinting this in RGB colors. 
So I'm tinting this with blue and I'm tinting black and white or I'm mapping blue to black and white just for the sake of it make this blue call it B and just duplicate it twice call this R for red and G for green also quickly colorize this and make this one red now we have a red one here and let's also make a green one and now what we would do in printing and on the screen we would add those three colors so let's just change the blending mode to add if you don't see the blending modes here just click the toggle switches and select the three and go to add now you see when I'm bringing out the background again you would have to invert them so that they look right so add a black background and invert it fine now we see that the three colors mixed get the black result now we just want to slightly offset them to get this really nice look so what I would do is split up red and green and just offset the blue one in the other direction so really quick go to one side with the red and I'm just using the arrow keys by the way and I'm just focusing on some circles that I can see pretty obvious okay just like so and now I'm bringing the blue to the top and of course you can offset those as much as you like there you have your half tone look in a colored version like almost like an offset print and what you could do as a really final step you could just bring your source to the top and just try different blending modes or even just the opacity to mix it all together and to come up with a look that is really really awesome and of course what you can do you can always just go into your source layer even now even at the very end and just and just change the image maybe you just wanna add some text like flow motion maybe with a ramp beneath it maybe also add a ramp to the text itself and there you have it a really unique way to create a look that is fully customizable and you can always switch out or even animate the text the images or even apply this whole effect to a video I hope you really learned a bit about how you can use this technique to create your own patterns out of black and white images and now I wish you a lot of fun while experimenting with different patterns in After Effects.